In a distant and second-hand set of dimensions, in an astral plane that was never meant to fly, the curling star mists waver and part. See, great Atuin the turtle comes, swimming slowly through the interstellar gulf, hydrogen frost on his ponderous limbs, his huge and ancient shell pocked with meteor craters, through sea-sized eyes that are crusted with room and asteroid dust, he stares fixedly at the destination. Hi everyone, that is the start to the first of the Terry Pratchett Discord series, A Colour of Magic. With this book, a legend was born, and over 40 books later, the Discworld is now sadly complete due to the untimely death of its creator, Terry Pratchett. Now, a few Terry Pratchett facts first, before we get on to quotes and fun with Discworld. Terry Pratchett was born on the 28th of April 1948, and he died, sadly, on the 12th of March 2015, aged 66. He published his first book, The Carpet People, in the 1970s. I was born in the 1970s. The book is as old as me. That's scary. He was diagnosed with a rare form of Alzheimer's in 2007 called posterior cortical atrophy. This means that it's not a normal kind of Alzheimer's which where your mind completely goes and you can't recognise people. He could still recognise people in things, he just couldn't necessarily find the words. As for instance there'd be a cup on the table and he knew it was a cup but he wouldn't see it and then he'd look again and it'd be there. It was a very strange form. In the end he dictated his novels into his computer and eventually his PA Rob typed them out. He donated one million pounds to Alzheimer's research once he was diagnosed. He advocated and campaigned for the plight of the orangutans and also for the le legislation and legalisation of assisted dying. He didn't like the term assisted suicide. He liked assisted dying. He left a lot of work in progress and his daughter Rhiannon is now in charge of his writing legacy. She has said that she will not release the um, unfinished stories and she will not write any Discworlds herself, which is fair enough, I don't blame her. I mean, it would be very hard. He created something very, very special. He published lots of other books. He wrote Good Omens with Neil Gaiman, uh, Truckers, Diggers, The Cosmos series, The Long Earth, The Long Cosmos, The Long Utopia, etc. And he also published uh, a book of short stories and uh, a fiction and a book of non-fiction short stories. And we'll look at those a bit later on. So I'm gonna show you some of the Discworld books that I have. This I only got recently is the Illustrated Eric. I had the paperback copy which is like this, but it wasn't the illustrated version. So this was originally published as a graphic novel, as an illustrated version, and is just beautiful. The artwork is by Josh Kirby. In 2001, I can't believe it was 15 years ago, he published another graphic novel. This time the artwork was done by Paul Kidby, and this was a Discworld fable called The Last Hero. Now I haven't read this one yet, it's the only one I haven't read. But again, the artwork is just simply gorgeous. The characters are recognisable, the famous characters. There's Rincewind the Wizard. And let's have a look, who else have we got? Story the, the Man is about, the story, Cohen the Barbarian. So, yeah, I mean, I'm very sad that there won't be any more Discworlds, but I'm really grateful that we've got what we have got. I think we are very, very lucky that he's left us such an amazing and incredible body of work. Um, I intend to start collecting his non-Discworld stuff now. There have also been lots of other books related to the Discworld that aren't actually Discworld stories. For instance, there's been maps and oh, all sorts of things. Um, so two of the other books I have, and I'm sure I had another one, is the Unseen University Challenge which is a quiz book. So open it up and let's have a look. What have we got? Question. How does a monster tush Akathilip, the infernal star toad with a million young torture its, its victims to death? And that's from moving pictures and so on. 
you know, and it's it's just quotes and things, which is great. If this is a nice quiz. There was a second one, and I'm sure I had it. In fact, I know I had it, just know what happened to it. And that was the weirdest link. I don't know where it's gone though. So, and then you've also got to, one of my favourite books, which is Nanny Og's Cookbook. This is Nanny Og. This is who I'm playing in November at the Dolman uh, in Weird Sisters. I am playing her, Nanny Og. And such recipes as Nobby's Mum's Distressed Pudding, Nanny Og Special Nibbles, you can imagine what they're like, Mrs. Colon's Genuine Clatchin Curry, Banana Soup Surprise. I dread to think what the surprise is. So, yes, this, I mean, they're real recipes you could make. I, I don't think I'd want to try them. And then you've got etiquette at the table about what to have. And it's just. The, the, oh, it's just wonderful. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some great Terry Pratchett Discworld quotes. So, Terry Pratchett quotes. Rather than have a stack of 40 odd books, as you can see, there's a few of them behind me, but not many, I am going to take the quotes from The Wit and Wisdom of the Discworld, favourite quotations compiled by Stephen Briggs, who also is the guy who adapts most of the plays. So, I'm not going to go through every single book because we'd be here forever. So, just a few favourites. So, from The Colour of Magic, which was the first book we looked at. I love this quote. If completing utter chaos was lightning, then he'd be the sort to stand on a hilltop in a thunderstorm wearing wet copper armour and shouting, All gods are bastards. So, that's a great one. Another one from The Colour of Magic is, We've strayed into a zone with a high magical instinct. I index Rincewind said. Don't ask me how, but once upon a time a really powerful magic field must have been generated here and we're feeling this after effects. Precisely, said a passing bush. And that's the thing with them, um, Pratchett. It's just so, so fabulous. Uh, from the Light Fantastic, which was is a Cohen, the Barbarian story as it's, you know. Cohen had heard of Fighting Fair and had long ago decided he wanted no part of it. So, yes, and then there's Equal Rights, that's a, a good one. So, basically, um, this one's from Equal Rights. There was a village tucked into a narrow valley between steep woods. It wasn't a large village and it wouldn't have shown up on a map of the mountains. It barely showed up on the map of a village. It wasn't that Granny could make herself invisible. It was just that she had this talent for being able to fade into the foreground so she wasn't noticed. No one can outstare a witch, except a goat, of course. And then you've got Mort, which is about death, hiring an apprentice. So, they, I mean, and, and this is another book. I got this. This was a W.H. Smith exclusive, and it says six ninety nine 99 off. Buy one, get one half price. But this was only record, the price on this was 7 99 so I got it for a pound. It was bizarre. So we're just gonna flip to a page. We've got Lord and Ladies. Magret normally wore a simple dress with not much underneath it except for Magret. Because it wasn't much of Magret anyway. It wasn't that Rid Cully was stupid. Truly stupid wizards have the life expectancy of a glass hammer. He had quite a powerful intellect but it was powerful like a locomotive and ran on rails and was therefore almost impossible to steer. So, and then you get on to the later ones, which, um, you know, like, uh, The Truth and Thief of Time and The Last Hero. So this is The Last Hero, which is the graphic novel I showed you. He's been a legend in his own lifetime. He can remember the great days of high adventure. He can remember when a hero didn't have to worry about fences and lawyers and civilization. He can remember when people didn't tell you off for killing dragons. But he can't always remember these days where he put his teeth. He's really not happy about that bit. So now with his ancient sword and his now new walking stick and his old friends, and they are very old friends, Cohen the Barbarian is going on one final quest. It's been a good life. He's going to climb the highest mountain in Discworld and meet his gods doesn't like the way they let men grow old and die. It's time, in fact, to give something back. The last hero in the world is going to return what the first hero stole, with a vengeance. That'll mean the end of the world if no one stops him in time. Someone is going to try. 
So who knows who the last hero really is. The Monstrous Regiment is quite a nice one. That's one of the brilliant stories. That's, yeah. And then you've got the, the young readers, like Tiffany Aiken stories, like the We Free Men. He was just so prolific. Um, going Postal is one of my favourites and my friends are doing this in Cardiff at the gate this, this week? This week, I believe, yes. So we're not rehearsing Weird Sisters because the director, Jez, is actually in Going Postal at the gate, which is one of, it is one of my favourite books. And it basically, Moist Von Lipwig is a con artist and a fraud and a man faced with a life choice. Be hanged or put Ank Morpork's ailing postal service back on its feet. It's a tough decision. But he's got to see that the mail gets through, come rain, hail, sleet, dogs, the post office workers, friendly and benevolent society, the evil chairman of the Grand Trunk Semaphore Company and our midnight killer. Getting a date with Adora Bella Dearheart would be nice too. <laughs> so yes, I think it's very sad that this come to end, but I think we have a wonderful, excuse me, just moving out of shot, we have a wonderful legacy of books. If you haven't read them, give them a go. I would advise don't start with Colour of Magic because it's his first one and it's before the ideas are truly formed. Although, I really love what he says at the beginning. This is a, a reprint. I wish I had a first edition. A lot of mine are first editions, but not this one, sadly. In his introduction, he says, If I had a penny for every time someone asked me where I got the idea for the Discworld, I'd have, hang on a moment, £4.67. Anyway, the answer was, is it was lying around and it didn't look as if it belonged to anyone. And at this point, the first book of the series reprint, he says that will eventually contain at least 10. Like I said, there are over 40. But like I said, he didn't just write Discworld, he wrote a lot of other things. He also wrote some very good short stories. Those are collected in this book, A Blink of the Screen. Um, You've got some very short, there are some short Discworld stories in here as well, well as, as non-Discworld. So quite a lot of Discworld stories in here actually. But you've also got um, non-Discworld stuff that goes back to 1963. So he wasn't even 20 then, he was just a kid. Um, I think my favourite is Turntables of the Night. I really like Turntables of the Night. I'm not gonna tell you what happens in it because it would be spoiler, but just say that death meets a DJ. And then you have got stories about, like I said, there's some Discworld stories, short stories, which is really, really nice. There are some illustrations which, in this book, which, are, which is great. So you can have a look at those. Um, <laughs> unseen academicals, I believe. Football team cards. And um, yeah, so, I mean, this is a really good book. If you don't, if you, if you want to try Pratchett's humour before stepping out with a Discworld full novel or any of his other novels, give his short fiction a go. It's it's just his sense of humour is so funny. I really, I really love this book. And finally, I said with the keyboard is in collective non-fiction. Again, this is a brilliant book from the various sections, you know, things are about when he attended conferences and um, from articles from SFX magazine that he wrote, um, to articles for the newspapers about all sorts of things, including the orangutans, the NHS, assisted dying and his Alzheimer's. Now, as a person who has had a family that suffered from Alzheimer's, as most of us do, my grandfather suffered very badly from it and it was horrible to see him not know who we are. And to be so upset because he knew he should know who we are um i'm going to be posting a link down below in the thing because my friend amy Pugh is currently raising money for alzheimer's research so far she has run the cardiff half marathon climbed the three peaks i think she's going to be running another half marathon and in october she will be trekking the great wall of china all for Alzheimer's. I'm going to leave a link below to her Just Giving page because I think it's very important that we support Alzheimer's research as well as other research into other medical but when you've had a family member suffer from it and you see that what it does to people it it's one of those things that means a lot and the chances are it's going to hit all of us at some point in our lives so if you can spend spare even one pound 
just one pound or 50p it doesn't matter if you can spare a pound just link on to Amy's page just giving page which is below and donate a pound Oops. There goes the last hero. That pound could be the pound that finds the cure. That pound could be the pound that makes a difference. So I mean, I'm gonna put some pictures of Amy up here now, um, doing her various bits and pieces. Please, please, if you can, spare a pound, just donate a pound. Let's, let's find a way to stop this awful disease taking someone else. Terry Pratchett was only 66 years old. He had so much more to give us. I'm going to leave you with a quote from one of his stories in this book, which is um, on his Alzheimer's. Um, it's from an article that was published in the Daily Mail, I believe. Or is it from a different one? No, it's from a different one. It was the Mail on Sunday, so it wasn't far off. It was published on the 2nd of August 2009. And it's the title is Point Me to Heaven When the Final Chapter Comes. And he said, I write this as someone who has regrettably become famous for having Alzheimer's. Although being famous is all the rage these days, it's a fame I could do without. I know enough to realise that there will not be a cure within my lifetime. And I know the later stages of the disease can be very unpleasant. Indeed, it's the most feared disease among the over 65s. He was right. We didn't find a cure in his lifetime. But we could find a cure in my lifetime or your lifetime. So let's, let's do it. Let's raise some money for Alzheimer's. Like I said, donate some money. If you want to donate some money to the um, orangutans, I'll leave a link to the orangutan foundation as well. Great. Let's do it. Let's raise some money for things that Terry Pratchett himself believed in. And obviously I'm going to invite you all to come along to see our production of Terry Pratchett's Weird Sisters, which is on at the Dolman from, I think it's the 14th of November. It's on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday matinee at 7.15 Tuesday to Friday, 2.30 on Saturday. It is going to be a blast. That's the Dolman Theatre in Newport, South Wales. If you're in the area, you want a great night, you love Terry Pratchett, come and see it. There's a, I put a poster of it just here for you to have a look at. Please come and see it. It's gonna be a fab night. Let's celebrate Terry Pratchett. Let's celebrate him for what he was brilliant at. And that was writing extremely